I'm here to tell you a little bit about the ongoing research programs in my laboratory and uh, my research interests center around the molecular interactions between proteins and nucleic acids. And like many basic biomedical scientists, um, I'm interested in molecules because uh, that's sort of where the action is. Um, if you think about uh, taking into f in food uh, into our bodies, that food is broken down to the molecular level before it's taken in and utilized by our bodies. Vitamins, nutrients, even the drugs we take all work at the molecular level. And diseases, whether it be uh, uh, infectious diseases or cancer, all stem from events that occur at the molecular level. And so in order to understand the uh, genesis of these diseases and how things function, we really need to understand how molecules work. And so that's what uh, we do in my laboratory. So I'll tell you about two projects. One uh, related to a basic science project to study the uh, DNA unwinding by a protein called helicases, and I'll tell you what that's all about. And then I'll finish with a second project in which we're studying the uh, replication of a virus called the hepatitis C virus. So uh, DNA, of course, is the molecule that stores and transfers genetic information. And as such, it's been referred to as the master molecule because it sort of uh, directs the, the functions of other molecules. So the DNA structure is shown in this image in cartoon form. And what you can see is one strand of DNA wrapped around a second strand of DNA, and that's why it's referred to as the double helix. It's one helical strand wrapped around a second helical strand. But the information content that is so important that DNA stores is actually stored in the central portion, sort of the interior of the helix. In order to get at and really utilize that information, a cell needs to unwind, or molecules in the cell need to unwind that DNA. So in order to unwind uh, the DNA, a cell needs to utilize molecules to do this. Now, in the test tube, one can take a little snippet of DNA and put it into solution and heat up that uh, solution, and the DNA will begin to uh, undergo unwinding. It'll melt apart. And that's because you're putting energy into the system. But in the cell, uh, that energy has to come from somewhere else because organisms can't simply raise their temperature at will. And that energy comes from a molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP is sort of the energy currency of a cell. It's the molecule that other molecules utilize to gain and transfer energy. And in the case of unwinding DNA, ATP can't bind directly to the DNA and transfer energy. So yet another molecule has to perform that function. And that is the molecule that we study primarily. And that molecule is a protein shown here in yellow, that's referred to as a helicase. Uh, proteins are uh, like DNA, they're long polymers, and those polymers then fold up into globular structures. And in cartoon form, we show them uh, at the molecular level like this. And so this is a protein bound to the DNA, and this particular protein is called a helicase. And it's named that because it, uh, its job is to unwind the helix. So, what my lab is interested in is studying this protein and understanding how it binds to ATP, chemically transforms that ATP in order to produce energy, and then utilizes that energy to melt out or unwind this duplex structure in order to gain access to the information in DNA. And this can be likened to a car engine where the engine burns fuel and performs mechanical work. In this case, the protein burns fuel, with the fuel being ATP, and performs mechanical work, with the mechanical work being the manipulation of the DNA. So the importance of these enzymes, these proteins called helicases, is illustrated in uh, a couple of ways. One is the number of helicases that a cell has. There are literally over 100 different helicases because there are so many different processes that require manipulation of DNA that each of these processes requires uh, its own helicase or multiple helicases. There are some diseases that can be directly attributed to dysfunction of certain helicases. For example, this image shows uh, a teenager who has a disease called Werner's syndrome, which is basically a single mutation in a single helicase resulting in uh, premature aging. This is a picture of the same individual at age 48. And so somehow a domino effect occurs whereby this one protein's dysfunction leads to a dramatic uh, disease effect. Our work in trying to understand how helicases, how helicases function uh, in the normal state should shed light on what goes wrong when a helicase is mutated and it's uh, no longer functional. 
So this is a project that is an example of a basic biomedical research project. And by basic biomedical research, an analogy could be made to a football game, where one simply can play the game much better if one understands the rules. And basic biomedical research is about trying to understand the rules uh, in terms of the molecules in the cell that perform the functions. Now, unfortunately, um, pathogens uh, such as bacteria and viruses that infect our cells already know the rules quite well. HCV stands for the hepatitis C virus. It's uh, a virus that infects liver cells primarily and causes uh, a number of disease states such as liver cirrhosis and liver cancer. HCV can infect and multiply itself inside of our cells despite the fact that there are many different antiviral mechanisms at play. So in other words, the, the virus has sort of figured out the rules and can evade them. We want to understand how the virus replicates. And the virus replicates in manners that are similar to our own uh, nucleic acid replication in that HCV encodes its own helicase. And so we're studying a helicase protein from HCV. HCV is a tremendous medical problem, and so uh, this project is more of a translational research project where the results of our project could have a potential immediate impact on human health. What we wish to understand is how the HCV helicase functions and then compare that to how normal helicases function. HCV infects over 2 million Americans and 200 million uh, persons worldwide. Therapies for treating HCV are um, available, but they don't function very well with less than 50% of the uh, persons being treated actually exhibiting a positive response. So there's a desperate need for new treatments and new therapies developed for HCV. We know from our biochemical studies that if we stop the helicase function, the HCV helicase function, then we stop the virus from replicating. So the trick is to figure out how we can stop the hepatitis C virus helicase in the background of the dozens of other normal helicases that we know are functioning uh, in the cell to conduct normal processes. And that's where our two projects overlay. The basic biomedical research project to understand the rules of the game overlaps with the more translational research project that is the hepatitis C virus helicase in which we need to understand a specific enzyme and how it is similar and how it is different from those normal helicases.